And we're back for another episode. In this episode, we're going to be carrying on the main story in Final Fantasy XIV's expansion, Endwalker. And as always, hello from Mifri. So we are here in Alamigo in the locks at uh, 3631. And we need to talk to Maxima. So the quest is called Best of the Best. Maxima would have you meet your new traveling companions. The other members of the Isabar contingent are gathered in the royal palace. I shall inform them you, of your arrival, so please make your way inside as soon as you are ready. Okay. Uh, let's talk to this person. Uh, the remaining members of the Scions, your friends, and most of the Isabar contingent await within. Would you like me to see you through? Sure. By the Twelve. Glad you could join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. As you can imagine, our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. Tis a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals assembled for a single purpose. We fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzabad contingent. Indeed, which is why I am glad to find myself in the company of many trusted comrades, yourselves included. Lucia. I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. And for the good of all nations, not least my former homeland, I am determined to see this mission through to its end. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. I have faith that, if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. Everyone! If I may have your attention! Wow. I've interacted with all these people at one point in the past. Might I ask you to speak first? If I must. I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation. Here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer. We shall provide support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Of course, with an experienced white mage such as yourself accompanying us as well, those requiring more Involved treatment will be in safe hands. Raya O sends her regards, by the way. Suppose I'd better say my peace. Wait, I know you. The name's Sickard, in case you've forgotten. Truth be told, I'd rather you had forgotten. Any road, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason, he picked me. Of course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners, and my reputation's taken enough of a keyhole in as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you gotta trust in the commander of your ship. It sounds British to me. 
So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. Give them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind, but we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. Well, you're certainly raring to go. But then again, so are we. The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Aldin's behest. If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. That's where we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarrapin and I will be leading from the front. It's been some time since I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya, the Avatar of Destruction. <laughs> With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits us. And then we might finally get a chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, let's give it our all. As for Ishgard, we Temple Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace and welfare of our allies. The bitter cold of Garlemald is a formidable enemy in of itself. Our experience fighting in ice and snow will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do all in my power to provide you with the leadership and guidance you require. The four High Houses, House Hylinart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature, together with the smiths of Limpsa Lomitsa. There is another awaiting introduction. Lord Emonelaine? Ah, yes. Emonelaine uh, de Fortor, at your service. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your <laughs> twinkle-toed gentleman of light. Uh, may your graceful prancing lead the way to victory. I don't think your fancy footwork may be all that stands between us and certain doom. Huzzah! I cannot wait to regale on a roi with my tales of daring do. I believe that concludes introductions for the Grand Company of Eorzea. <laughs> like, yeah, we're doomed. Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Would that be the Shinobi of Doma? Actually, they've been tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Out of my way, you preening fool! Forgive us for coming late. 
We are the delegates of the Eastern Alliance. Sirena, and you've brought company. For battle and blood we come, as the step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Doma, only to find them beyond our reach. But now our thirst for slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! Sadu Hatun, no. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Warriors of the Steppe, we've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are... Members of the Dalmascan Resistance Group, Lente's Tears. and the Bosnian resistance. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities, which is fortuitous, since Garlemald's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. Dalmasca, Bosnia, Alamigo, all lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal is to aid the victims of the Tilophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. And they are victims, make no mistake. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. But after seeing what we've seen, fighting and working against and with Garleans, there's no denying the simple truth. They're just people. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. For Dola who once swore herself to Garlemald, has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Imperial defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Maxima, who stands with us today, tried to reform Garlemald from within and make peace with Joma. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. Greater good. It won't be easy. But we're all determined to make this world a better place. What lingering concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Then we are in accord. Now, let us review our strategy. To reach the Garlean capital in northern Ilzabad, we must cross the central mountain range. Fortunately, Garland Ironworks can provide aerial transport, sparing us this most treacherous part of our journey. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our contingent is an area between the range and the capital, the Magna Glacias. From there, we must travel the rest of the way on foot. We will also need to bring the airships with us to ensure we can withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in snow, we should be able to make use of local roads and shipping facilities. The vast ice field will afford us an unobstructed view of the surrounding area. On the other hand, it will also allow others to easily spot us. So it is imperative that we only make camp in positions where we can easily defend ourselves. And the airships, which must be kept safe at all costs. 
We cannot account for every possibility, so we must be prepared to think on our feet. We will be tested. Sorely tested, I expect. But for our homes and for our people, and a people not our own but in need, we will succeed. Spare no effort in your preparations. Once we depart, there is no turning back. Or oh, the Horde! Sorry, wrong game. Cool. Let's talk to Ishtola. So, uh, besides the delegates assembled here, the Amalgia and several other tribes offered to send troops of their own. Unfortunately, due to their physiology, many would struggle simply to survive in the harsh climate of Isobard. That would also likely prove uh, tempting targets for abduction by the Telephroi. All things considered, they can better rate the cause by bolstering our defences in Eorzea, though their eagerness to do more has been noted. We few shall have uh, to suffice. Ere we embark, we must distribute the warding scales to our comrades. Uh, care to do the honours? Cool. Alright, so now we're giving out the wards to everyone. So Lucia, uh, warding scales for the Ishgardian delegation, I take it? Yep, there you go. So it says, these enchanted talisman, or should that be uh, talisman, uh, would probably require considerable less time and effort to produce if the alchemists of the great work were not so preoccupied with making them look pretty. Many thanks. Uh, these talisman may prove to be the deciding factor in the battles to come. I find myself uh, conflicted by, by this foray into Golemold, sent by the Empire to infiltrate um, Ishgard, only to throw in my lot with those whose secrets I was supposed to be stealing. And now I lead a mission to save the countrymen I betrayed. But that is doubtless why I was chosen by Lord Aymeric. He would have me uh, put, to, put my sense of knowledge and former ties to good use. I will not disappoint him. For the future of Ishgard, Garlemald, and the world at large, I will lead us to victory. Okay. Let's give it to Ida. So, uh, that a set of warding scales, I spy. Uh, not that I would know what they look like. Let's hand over. So, wow, look at these. Even a layman like me can tell that they're bursting with aether. All the better to fend off the tempering waves. Is that the term? Anyway, uh, these will give us one less thing to worry about, which just leaves the other mountain um, of whatever else is waiting for us in Golemold. Only one way to find out, eh? And nervous or not, I'd march through se all seven hells if it gave me a chance to put Xenos back in the grave where he belongs. Okay, next. Sick hard. I hear you've got something for us, Governor. All right, let's hand this over. Ah, them scales everyone's been talking about. Pretty little things, um, ain't they? Reckon they'll be worth a gill or two when this is all over. But we'll hold on to them for now. And one more thing. I know uh, what you're all thinking. Why didn't they send um, Ezenzar instead? Uh, Buggered if I know, all the Admiral and Captain Helfar told me was that they needed someone to help safeguard the future, and here I am. Can't say that they haven't got a sense of humour. Of course, some of you might be wondering what good a pirate is on dry land, in the middle of the sodding snow of all places. Well, me and my crew do whatever needs doing, so let's set sail, or however the saying goes on airships. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I might have sent you just because you're expendable. Uh, okay, let's talk to... Everyone's center? Yes. Let's hand over the scales. So, uh, these are the famed warding scales. Enough for me and my men, I see. I myself 
am especially grateful for this opportunity to visit distant lands. I wish to follow in the footsteps of Master Atoya and learn all there is to learn of this star or we, uh, we all call home. Instead, that's the primary reason I volunteered to join the expedition. The journey outside the Twelve's Wood, much less enter into Imperial territory, is a rare privilege offered, uh, afforded a Pajal. Not now tagging along to see the sights, the Gullians would benefit from my healing magics, as would our comrades should fighting break out. Okay, and then last but not least, Sinner. So we heard that it would be cold in Golemoth, so we came prepared. Oh, we've got one left after this. Um, oh, the talisman. We are to keep these close at all times, yes? I will see that no one misplaces theirs. And before I forget, I have a message from here. In distant lands, in times of strife, together stand, together fight. In darkness shines the light of life, the fire of life. Um, I hope I have done his words justice. Doma, like much of Ophard, has been plagued by the towers. Yet while he could not be here, he wished to express his shared conviction. He and Yugiri labor without rest to unite the people, and with their aid will keep the enemy at bay. And we of the Steppe and the Eastern Alliance will replay their efforts by ending this war. Okay. Then let's deliver a scale to Maxima. You have a wording scale for me too. Yep. Last one. Thank you for this, and for going to such incredible lengths for the sake of my people. Though I have little to offer in return, I would impart some advice. If I may, uh, you have been told by many to ward the cold of Isobard, and I cannot stress this enough, that this is no token warning. Um, I will be dis sorry, distributing specially made warming uh, tinctures, courtesy of the Alchemist Guild, but understand that they are not suitable for... Uh, proper protection. I leave the provisioning of said protection at your discretion. Now let us proceed to the Alabican quarter. While you make your fountain preparations, I will have the pilots ready the airships. Cool. Alright, so let's talk to Master Alphanode. So this is our last chance to make ready before we set forth. You needn't worry about Yuri Anje and I. We still have what we wore in Gala Mold beforehand. Uh, Istinian's claims to be quite warm and toasty beneath his armor. And since he spent a fair bit of time up north recently as well, I have no reason to doubt his words. Most of the others will be borrowing Grand Company stock. The rest of you could do likewise, I suppose. Uh, provided that you're not overly concerned with style. Hmm. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I wouldn't be seen dead in one of those ridiculous overcoats. If only I had time to find something of to my liking. Hark. Um, is that the cry of the scions in need of a tailor right here? Huh. Hello. But how? Um, I have my ways. Oh yes, indeed. You thought you could sneak off to Isabad without telling me? Nothing escapes my notice. Now, you will wear these garments I've made for you whether you like it or not. You never cease to amaze. But why do you need a new outfit as well? Wait, are you coming with us? What? No, of course not, silly. It's all the in the name of fashion. Rather, the pursuit of the highest quality fashion. Besides, how can I expect others to wear my creations if I never worn them myself? Ah, uh, I did have one other thing to share. Um, Armagus and uh, Bloom Weeda have finally returned from assignments in faraway lands. They'll be staying at the Rising Stones for a while to keep an eye on events throughout Eorzea. 
since I'll be returning things back at headquarters, I was wondering if I could lend a hand in Charlia? Uh, why not? You can keep uh, Cryo Company and the Baldassian Annex. Yes, we'd love to have you there. And I heard um, Armegas and Bloom Weeder did a fine job carrying on in our stead while we were lying comatose. With them in charge at the Rising Stones, we've nothing to worry about. My thoughts exactly. Also, while I'm confident you won't go collapsing again, because a certain someone who shall remain nameless isn't in a position to transport you, your souls, to another world, if anything similarly disastrous were to happen, I'll be well positioned to do something about it. Anyway, I've got a few things to take care of, and then I'll make my way to Charlian. I really do hope these new clothes are enough to keep you warm in Garlemald. It's not much, but it's the only thing I can do for you, other than pray for your safe return, which I will, every day. Let's not keep the contingent waiting any longer. Here are your winter woolies, handcrafted by yours truly. Cool. Okay, that that's quest is done. So let's now go do the next quest. Okay, let's talk to Tataru. The next quest is called A Frosty Reception. Tataru is desperately trying to retain her composure as she prepares to see you off on another perilous journey. I'm told the airship pilot has uh, been sent to meet you. Ah, there he is. Alright, this is where we go our separate ways. Do be careful, won't you? Okay. Uh oh, we have a fight. So it's an order to finally meet you. Uh, we of the Garland Ironworks will be ferrying you to your contingent across the mountains into Garlemald. Uh, for many of us, uh, it will be something of a homecoming. Our illustrious founder was only our most notable Imperial defector. For that reason, the company is committed to the success of this expedition. Our resources are at your disposal, and if there is all we might uh, do to be of further assistance, please do not hesitate to ask. If we are ready to depart, I will ready the engines. On boarding the airship, several cutscenes will play in sequence. It is recommended that you set aside sufficient time to view these scenes in order. In addition, you'll be required to participate in battle. The progress will be saved at certain points. In the event that you are defeated, you will be able to try again from the most recent of these. Please note that if you enter battles associated with other quests, or log out from the game, this progress will be lost. Fair enough, fair enough. So, let's go. Okay, where are we going? Ilsebad, divided in twain by a vast mountain range. Those who would traverse its jagged peaks face peril at every step. But why go by foot when one can simply fly? That's... On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, in the frozen wastes of the Magna Glacius. The winds howl in icy protest, as if to warn against further trespass. It's, it's obvious who goes to the gym and who doesn't. We've received word from Thancred's reconnaissance party. 
They've sighted a detachment of heavily armed Imperials. Survivors of the Civil War, perhaps? Perhaps, but there is more to it than that. Maxima reports that they're led by Vagilia, Legatus of the Third Legion, which comprises the bulk of their number. However, they are also joined by several members of the First. From what I recall, the Third Legion fought for Nerva in the War of Succession following Varus's death. The First, on the other hand, were under the direct command of the Emperor and rejected Nerva's claim to the throne. These legions were enemies. Indeed. In fact, our sources claim that it was a conflict between them that sparked the civil war. Yet now, these former foes cooperate to defend a ruined Garlemald from invasion. Then it is all but certain they have been tempered. So, what's the plan? If me and my crew is out reaving, we charge straight in, no messing about. But that ain't what we're here for. Quite right. Soldiers or no, they are people of Garlemald. The very ones we have come to aid. Direct confrontation is unavoidable. Nevertheless, we must make every effort to limit casualties on both sides. Rather than kill them, I would remove them from the field. How so? Savage beatings? Disarmament and imprisonment? Not impossible, but easier said than done in the heat of battle. Having observed the opposition, I imagine Thancred had something to suggest? He did. He and the other scouts have already infiltrated a supply depot some distance beyond the Imperial Detachment's current position. Stored within is a stockpile of Magitek armaments. And once we give the signal, Thancred's team will destroy them all. In so doing, we will deprive frontline troops of materiel, and likely force the detachment to send men to investigate. Divide and conquer. Not a bad idea. Once the scouts have finished their preparations, we will split into two groups. The first will form the vanguard, while the other brings up the rear with our supplies. As for the Scions, I ask that you lend your assistance where you deem it needed most. I would prefer, however, that you accompany the rearguard and be prepared to join the van at a moment's notice. Kept in reserve as our trump card, so to speak. In WoW, somewhere else. Your proposal was well received. More specifically, they asked that we destroy the Imperials' toys in as spectacular a fashion as possible. Vistola always did have a flair for the dramatic. She's not an easy woman to please, but I shall do my best to satisfy her thirst for fireworks. All right, once more for my peace of mind. Our first objective will be to rig the enemy's Magitek with explosives. After we've withdrawn to a safe distance, we'll detonate them remotely. Our second will be to issue a deactivation command to the automated units via the control terminal. If our calculations are correct, this signal should reach those deployed on the front line, giving our friends a much needed upper hand. The blizzard will help us stay hidden, so let's aim to get in and out before it passes. Trust in the plan. And we should all live to see tomorrow. In the meantime, I will relay messages back and forth as the situation unfolds. You'll forgive me if I ask again, but are you certain you wish to play the lone wolf? Wouldn't have it any other way. 
Call it foolish and reckless if you like, but I'll get the job done. I always do. Very well. I wish you the best of luck. Okay. Commence submission. Let's go. Keep your wits about you. It's time. We only have one shot at this, so let's make it count. Okay. So, let me actually sneak. Seven hells. I to think like when is the best time to go I think I was literally one hit away from dying. So, <laughs> let him recover his health. And then we'll try and sneak. Okay, his health is nearly fully recovered. dog over there. The god dog is incapacitated. And so far, so good. This is Thancred. The explosives are in place. Very good. All is proceeding as planned. Head to the control terminal. It should be to the northwest. Understood. Have the others wait at the rendezvous point. Okay. Hey. 
somehow they didn't see me. I don't know how that happened. Uh. Oh, this magic deck might see me. Okay. Ah, uh, uh, he saw me. I guess that was the best I could do. For some reason that slasher just doesn't see me. Disabled those. Found the right way. Or shall I just leave? Oh. I got it. I went completely the wrong way. Returned, and none the worse for wear, to my considerable relief. What news from our comrades? They stand at the ready. Excellent. Then let the fireworks begin. A few months later, at the Isabar Continued Supply Caravan. The blizzard's beginning to clear. The Vanguard should be engaging the Imperials any moment now, if they haven't already. Ishtola and the others are with them, so I'm sure they'll be all right, but... <gasps> Wait! Something's coming! Oi, oi! Looks like we ain't the only ones who sent out scouts. Keep them away from the carriages! We lose those, and we're as good as dead! And no pressure. Fighters! Protect the others! I think I can summon my chocobo.
A brief respite, but stay alert. Keep the carriages safe. Everyone healed up. Free's famous war cry. Okay, done. A fine display, but the other carriages are still in danger. Go on ahead. We'll hold the line. Okay. We're the only ones still struggling. Time we put our backs into it then. I've been itching for a good scrap. Last one. Of course. We're fine. I'm ready for more. Okay. Hear that? Get to the front and turn the tide. And north and join the vanguard. Oh. That's fun. Meanwhile, on the front line. Removed from the field was not a euphemism for enthusiastically murder. It's nothing that won't heal in time. The trouble is, their tempering has made them utterly fearless. Subduing them would be easier if they had the capacity to submit in the first place. Well, this is the path our young charges would have us walk, and that we all agreed to follow. You knew it would be hard, yet still you pledged your lance, did you not? That I did. Right, we're gonna play as a Sinium. Right. 
we're going to play as Lee's. I could be anyone. That's Bagilia. Damn it. I need to help the others take her down. There's no end to them. I was wondering when you'd turn up. There's no stopping us now. Come on, let's show them what we're made of. Cool. We have them now. Forward. Please me if we can actually heal. Right. Let them have it. Oops, sorry. Wrong button. <laughs> So far, so good. That's her, Bagilia. Do not fall behind. I, mean, I don't exactly feel like a hero if I am if I'm doing it it's like was it seven on one? Is this Virgilia is very powerful? She's using potions.
There's a lot of uh, fights in this which are just utter chaos. And we saw it in Temple of Sod as well. Adversary. Rest, recover, reclaim yourself. Then we will fight again to the death. Sadu Hatun. <laughs> Rejected. That was the last of them. The day is ours, thanks to your timely arrival. What of the supply caravan? Hmm. Outmaneuvered, but not outmatched. Good. Let us take the Imperials into custody and rejoin our comrades. And soon we shall arrive at the capital. So cold and unforgiving, thus spoke Emperor Solus as he gazed upon his barren domain. Eight hundred years it had been since the Garleans first set foot here. Bested by the Kavosi. After centuries of war, and driven from fertile southern pastures into the blasted northern wastes. In that garden of desolation, they clung to one another for warmth. Freezing, hungry, desperate, hated. The Chosen Forsaken. In the year 1513 of the Sixth Astral Era, a young Legatus named Solus single-handedly sparked the Magitek revolution. How did he conceive the machina that feed on Ceruleum? Once a common, soft-spoken soldier, how had he so quickly ascended through the ranks? Like so many others, those who knew the truth are gone. Taking in the capital with his eyes for the first time, I recall thinking to myself, far colder on the earth than in the heavens. Yes, far colder indeed, bitterly so. Finally made it to Golden Mold after eight years. Not so much as a whisper. The roads leading beyond the city walls would have been used less in recent years. Nevertheless, this was one of the most important gateways into the capital. 
Her buzz day and night with activity, aye. Merchants passing through the checkpoint, many of them stopping at the local hostelries. Surely they cannot all have been tempered. We can consider the question after we have made camp. If we spend any longer outside, we may well freeze to death where we stand. The tempered Imperials, too. This will be our temporary base of operations. Secure shelter for ourselves and the injured, and dispatch scouts to survey the surrounding area. If we're planning on staying here a while, we ought to give this place a proper name. Hmm. Well, the constant sound of ice cracking underfoot makes me think of broken glass. An apt name, perhaps. But enough of this. To work, everyone. Interesting. Okay, so let's tune. Literally waited eight years to come here. Let's talk to Alpha Node. So, in spite of the obstacles we face, our plan proceeds apace. Just a little further, and we will reach the capital itself. Still, we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. As soon as the camp has been made uh, fit for purpose, we are to discuss a course of action with Lucia. Would you mind asking Yishtola and Graha to join us in that building, the northeast of the camp? Alise and I will meet you there. Okay. A meeting, yes. I'll make my way over uh, once my head has cleared. In truth, I've been feeling out of sorts since we arrived. The air is thick with the palpable aura of ma malevolence. Uh, it is a monstrous tower on the horizon, jagged, hideous, unholy. Even at this distance, its presence is overwhelming. Much like the sensation I felt in the Tower of Zor, only far more terrifying. Aether flows unceasingly towards it, converging into a swirling mass of unfathomable power. For a blessing, the constant chill in the air is helping to anchor my senses in the here and now. Tell the others I shall tell the others I shall be with you in a few moments. Okay, then let's find Grahatia. Landing over there. Uh, you'll be pleased to know most of the tempered have been quartered inside the nearby buildings and are receiving treatment as we speak. I do, however, feel no small amount of guilt for the commandeering civilian homes. The occupants may be long gone, but the but everything is exactly as they left it. Considering the length of time that has already passed since, uh, one would expect to find them ransacked. Strangely, there are no signs of anything having been stolen. It's possible that everyone fled at the sign of trouble, though it seems to me that they left far too many useful possessions behind. Aye, although there is no conclusive evidence, I strongly suggest that they were tempered. Uh, sorry, I was merely thinking aloud. You mentioned a meeting. I will be making my way there. Um, okay, let's talk to Lucia. Well, thank you for informing the others of our meeting. When everyone is here, we will begin. Our present situation is as follows. Efforts to aid the people of Garlemald have begun in earnest. 
Moreover, having entered into the capital, the Imperial Palace is within our reach. But before we proceed further, we must learn what has befallen this city. For therein lies the key to understanding and combating the Telophoroi's designs. I have a suggestion, if I may. Several of the Imperial soldiers we captured on the Magna Glacias are members of the Popularis and acquaintances of mine. Once we have cured them of their tempering, they should be able to give a reliable account of the events leading to the capital's downfall. A promising idea. I will assist the healers and their ministrations. Of course, I will require a porxy of my own, assuming you can spare one. Would you like a hand? No, no, I am sure we will manage. Better that you take my place in the field. The noxious ether of this place disagrees with me, and as I shall need to draw on my own for the treatment, it would be prudent for me to remain within the camp. This talk of curing the tempered is all well and good, but I reckon the cold is a more pressing concern. All the houses round here are fitted with cerulean eaters that could keep us warm and toasty. Problem is, the machines seem to have given up the ghost, and if we keep sitting around, freezing our asses off, we'll be next. My smiths reckon that with the right parts, they can have them working again, but it won't be easy. Understood. The machinist will assist them in the repairs. The rest of us should either stand watch or survey the area. We've made our presence known to the Telothroi. They will be searching for us, if they have not already ascertained our position. That we have seen no sign of them since the battle suggests they have yet to do so. However, I suspect they may be biding their time. Or perhaps we are beneath their notice. In any event, we'll find no answers standing around here. Uriange, Estinian, and myself have visited Garlemald recently, so we'll lead the reconnaissance efforts. Perhaps bolstered by a few Bosnian and Dalmaskian scouts from my previous excursion for good measure. Don't forget about us Alamegans. We have experienced scouts of our own. Well now, this is turning out to be a rather sizable team. With such numbers, we should be able to cover a wide area with relative ease, including that surrounding the Imperial Palace. How about you, Graha? I have a feeling we'll find a use or two for that vanishing spell of yours. <laughs> Twould be my honor to be of service, though I doubt that you of all people need rely on my tricks. That leaves us with guard duty. As a matter of fact, I have something else in mind for the two of you and Alphino. Between here and the center of the capital lies the Eblen Rhine. I would have you search the area for survivors. Your keen sense of direction, honed in your extensive travels, should prove useful in navigating the ice fields. Um, if there are any survivors, we will surely find them. Sense of travels is something of an understatement, but I suppose it's... If there's nothing else that he's doing. Ice fields. I love ice fields. Oh wait, no I don't. I have faith that you will, and look forward to greeting you on your safe return. You all have your duties. Let us make haste. May the fury bless and keep you. That's a very long quest. Okay, let's talk to Alice. Uh, gods be good. If this... Sorry. <laughs> if this cold with Tataru's clothing, I dread to think how we'd fare without it. I must remember to thank her when we next meet. 
It makes me realize too that while the people of Golobold have spent their whole lives in conditions like these, even they'd be hard pressed to survive away from the warmth of their homes. If there are any survivors, we must find them and quickly. That's complete. Cool. Alrighty. I think that's a good time to end this episode. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always, goodbye from me and goodbye from Mifri. Bye, guys.